we're lucky, I would say, in Middlesbrough, for such a small area, we have a hell of a lot of fighters. Come on, two. Back, back, two, three. Back, back, back. It just resonates with them and they can let out a lot of their stresses. Two, three, two, roll. Two, three, two, pull. Two, three, two. That's it. You go off the rails, you know. I've just lost seven years. Of my time, I'll never get back, you know. When you're the only one getting beat up because you're the only one being like different then you start to realize that you're different since he started the gym he changed he literally changed overnight so like a little support thing so i wanted to come more so the support me more so yeah change <laughs> and that's the best part everyone will help everybody good rounds boys good rounds good pace that becomes like an extension of your family keep going <laughs> Keep going. This is just the start of something. I'm going to create it. No one's going to tell me I'm not. I kind of think myself, why am I letting him do it? But I don't want to hold him back. I need to be able to show I can do stuff myself. From your perspective, that's a good thing that you think like that because that's what's going to see you through. But we can't think like that. I'm your mum. If anyone says they don't get scared because they're lying, it's not something you should take lightly because one shot could change your entire life. Costa del Spencer back, Redder in Cleveland, Middlesbrough, lovely estate. where I live, where I grew up. It's not a very nice area. You obviously look about with boarded up windows. Drugs. Been a couple of shootings in the, in the last couple of months, maybe five or six. Obviously, it was quite hard, especially, like, being half, like, mixed race in the area. There's not many mixed race people about when I was younger. Basically, racism. A lot of bullies around here. Yeah, a lot of fighting as a, as a kid, you know what I mean? A lot of fighting. So two years later, I was still on bail, so it affected me mentally. After that, I wanted to do bad stuff. I wanted to be angry. That's when I was angry. No direction whatsoever. I call it self-destructing. Nothing to do. Smoking weed, taking tablets. It's all around you, even if you don't want it to be. A day's gone, and a week's gone, and a month's gone. Once you wake up in that life, you're in a nightmare. Them teen years, 16, leaving school, they're vital in your life. You go off the rails, you know. You can lose seven years, like I've just lost seven years, doing nothing, really. And then you're just getting generations of wrong people, and it's a never-ending cycle. It does change you, do you know what I mean? First time I walked in this gym, there was a buzz, there was a, there was a feeling around the gym. <laughs> it was giving off vibes like, whoa, like it sort of just grabbed me there and then. Come on, two, back, back, two, three, back, 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 slip, slip, right, back, back, good. I just knew that this was going to be a part of my life now. Right, yeah. <laughs> One, two, slip, two, three, two, roll, two, three, two, pull, two, three, two. That's it. And again. We've got everyone now, Jim. We've got policemen, ex-drug addicts. Everyone gets on fine and dandy. If someone catches your leg, you should expect to sweep. Okay? Whether it's this side 
all this side. Right now, and that's the best part. Everyone will help everybody so it becomes a huge family. Hey, Grant. <laughs> Stigma stuck with the MMA gym as in, oh, it's just a cage fight. That, that cage fight is stuck for years. That, like, uh, cage fight is in. Um, they'll just get you in the cage and just just back there, but that's not what it's like in the slightest, because you have to learn how to fight before you can even spar. Takedowns. We can come round here, we can step here. <laughs> yeah, boom, down, boom. <laughs> right? <laughs> we'll do that one again, because I like this. <laughs> Me and Chantal, we meet everybody. <laughs> no, I'm all jogging. And we're lucky, I would say, in Middlesbrough, or should I even say the northeast, for such a small area, we have a hell of a lot of fighters. I don't know whether that's got to do with the poverty. I teach a lot of underprivileged kids. I feel for a lot of the young people in Middlesbrough because there's not actually a lot of job opportunities for them. For them to get into like maybe a trade or like a solid career, it's really, really difficult. The town after COVID, there's nothing open. Everything's just empty buildings now. It just opens the door for the kids to want to make fast, easy money. And a lot of the time it can, you know, take them down a really, really bad path where they're getting involved with knife crime, guns and all that sort of thing. So I think when they come and do stuff like MMA, it just resonates with them and they can let out a lot of their stresses. That's it, keep it going. Not point five now. Four, five, control it. One more, put it down. Good lad, you'll be getting tired now. Ah, that should be low now. Boom. Let's go. Let's hit it again. Second round. I like to help people. Come on, pump it, pump it, pump it, pump it. Legs, arms, legs, arms. I'll put them in the right direction anyway, at least. Keep going. Keep going. I like to watch them change mentally. Come on. And physically. Uh, that's my personal buzz I get from it. It's these sessions, they're, like, they're not nice for any man. That'll break any man, but if you can do them sessions, you can get through that groove and what can happen to you. Like, forget pain, it's nothing. Four, five, two, three. Yes, good lad. Breathe. Fighting's 80% cardio. Like, once you're tired, you're not fast anymore, you're not powerful anymore. You just... Tired. Good girl. Let's go. Come on, keep him off. Good. Ooh, good He's got me in a shape I've never ever been physically and mentally. I'm just in a totally better place. Okay. Hey! It's definitely a positive role model in my life. Fourteen, come on. Fifteen, sixteen, Beautiful, Joshua. <laughs> Very good. Yes. You go to bed now. I'll jump on the scales here as well, see what he has. Yeah, what, what are we fighting at again? 83. What do you think you are now? I don't know, the burger fans been at work all week, and that's all. Wait, you better get on the scales, then. I'm going to have to see. Because that could be yeah. a problem. <laughs> I'm going to go 85. Oh, oh, my God. 83 key, bang on. 83, bang on? Central Park for me tonight. Right, that's <laughs> it, then. Don't be going any any more than a kilo over than that now. Nah, laughing. I'm mint. Now I've just done that. Got that out the way first thing. Now 30. Day started, got a positive day now. Get that jab going, Jacob. If you can touch him with the jab, you can touch him with everything else. Don't throw anything unless the jab lands. That's better. Nice. Good. First of all, I really got addicted to 
And the first time I hit the pads, like the crack of the pads, it's just like the noise, the like loud smack on the pad as soon as my punch hit. And it was like, I like that noise. That noise sounds powerful. And that's just one of the best feelings I've ever felt. I think my brain's like kind of blocked it out. It's difficult to remember, but I just know sometimes I was on the floor. I wasn't doing anything back. I wasn't able to do anything back because it was like three, four people at the same time all ganging up on me. That's your son that's being judged and it's your son that's on the receiving end of it. But you can't go to the school and start throwing punches for them. You've got to rely on the system. And... On a fair few occasions, the system's let us down. I remember going to the toilet to cry sometimes. It's just like, I can't cry in front of them because that's another thing they can bully me for. You're the only one getting beat up because you're the only one being, like, different. Then you start to realise that you're different. Nobody understood him. Some kids these days are getting diagnosed at five and six and then there's an understanding around that child and we missed that by almost half of his life, really. I didn't trust anyone for ages. I didn't like anyone for ages. I was shut down to everyone and not like anyone and like explore to everyone to keep them away like i'd go home and obviously my dad was there so i'd I, I, like just didn't have a good relationship with him so i'd lash out at home it got really quite bad to the point where i thought the best thing for my kids and for me would be to actually take us out of that situation so i did I'm still insecure from being bullied, so I wear like long sleeves and like keep my hood up for, like, quite a lot and like hide my appearance. The first time I walked into here, I was nervous. I was like overweight as well. I was still a bit big, but I could come here. I could feel like good. Everyone was sound and I could learn how to like defend myself. Good rounds, boys, good rounds, good pace. Yeah, you can learn and get better. It's like a little support thing, so I wanted to come more, so they support me in more stuff. <laughs> good change. <laughs> I don't feel like I've been judged once here. Everyone doesn't pry anything on with me just because I'm a bit different. I don't have no bullies, no idiots in the gym. They don't last. They come maybe once or twice. I'll tell them to calm down lighter. If they carry on, if you want to go like that, you have to spar with the pro lads and me and the rest of the other lads. <laughs> don't come back again sort of thing. Coming to this gym, if I'm frustrated, I hit the heavy bag for a good few minutes. I get tired hitting the heavy bag. That's my frustration gone, and if it comes back, I can just go straight back on the heavy bag. It's mentally pleasing for a lot of them. It keeps them clear here. Therapeutic is the word I should use. You feel like hitting people sometimes, but you can't. <laughs> it's a way to just get out your system, I guess, and just a bit of violence, not too much violence, but a little bit. <laughs> Hi. 
me. You always kept saying me. You're going to come and see me first, bike, Grandma. No. Why? Because I don't want to see. God, die if anything would happen to him. Yeah, you don't like... You watch your MMA with me, but you don't like me doing it, do you? It was different when it's no. somebody that's close to your son. It's, there's more at stake, you She's know. a fan of the MMA, You though. worry more. Yeah, yeah but that's that. watching somebody else get beat up, not you. I'm not going to get beat up. I want to do the beating up. Well, you'd still get a few smacks. From your perspective, that's a good thing that you think like that because that's what's going to see you through. But we can't think like that. I'm your mum. I kind of think myself, why am I letting him do it? But... He needs to actually know to for it to be cemented in his brain, and it'll go one way or the other. He'll either love it or he'll hate it. Where do you go after this Saturday night? Home. No, I mean, where where will it lead to? Where where will his next match be? I want to try and get a few amateur fights first. You know. Is that right? Test the waters. Yeah, I'm sure. Can we just get this first amateur boxing match? Out of the way. He'll change his mind after Saturday. I don't think he will. I don't really see any consequences behind it. It's like, why would I care about getting hit in a ring with padding on and rules? Like, why would I care about that? Is that your first fight then? Yeah, it's my first fight on Saturday. And are you bothered about, like, audience or anything? Do you think it'll put you off? Me? I don't like big crowds, but it's like... I'm excited because it's like, oh, yeah, it's something that I've never experienced before. And I want to do it over again and again, but it's like the feeling of nerves. Like, it's also like, why am I choosing to do this as a sport when I could have chose anything else? Yeah, you start questioning yourself yeah. a little bit, fine. Yeah. Have you worked as hard as you can? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. You're here, like, more than most people as well. I don't have a life. <laughs> The gym is my life, actually, to be fair. I'm trying to go all the way over it. Like, I'm going to turn it into my life now, do you know what I mean? Next, this year I got serious. Next year I'm going to get even more serious. I do want to fight, but I don't know if I'd make a career out of it. Uh, I guess, like, women, there's a lot less of us. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it could be possible. I, I might go down that route, but... I know that I can't imagine not training anymore. I can't imagine cutting it out. I see myself at the very top in 10 years. That's my dream. That's everything I'll be working for. This is just the start of something. I'm going to create it. No one's going to tell me I'm not. It doesn't matter what avenues I have to go down to get to where I am, but I'm going to get there. <laughs> I hope I can do it as a career, because I like training. But I don't know if I'm good at it until Saturday. I know I'm good, like, sparring, and I know I'm good on the pads and, and stuff like that. But I don't know if I'm going to be good in the ring when, like, people are staring at me and there's lights and cameras on me and that. No, you don't play a fight. It's not football. It's not rugby. Their sports, I would say, you play fighting. It's not that sort of a sport. Fighting is fighting. It's not something you should take lightly because one shot can change your entire life. Crossroads when I was like, right, am I gonna be a fighter or am I gonna concentrate on being a fighter? And I decided, fight brigade. Do I look back and think, should I have tried? Eh, no, I'm quite happy with how things planned out. Being a fighter is a phenomenal job. It's like being at school again with all your mates. That becomes like your second family. Never know what you're gonna go through when you get a shout. You can get quite a bit of abuse. The kids see you differently, and uh, they're not our best friends. They're gonna bottle us and brick us and call us this and all the rest of that. There's a bit more respect in the coaching world than he is for the fire brigade.
We do 49 hours on station a week, and then I might do about 60 hours in the gym. <laughs> Do a curry, a stew, steak dish. I love cooking. So I said to Nathan, why don't we put a deli in the gym? And I can do the meal preps from there, and it goes well with the gym because it's healthy. So it's a full day of cooking. It's really, like, helped me integrate myself a lot into the gym as well. My meal preps are getting busier and busier, so, yeah. Now it's like my little second home. I don't really think that the alpha male vibe bothers me because I'm an alpha female, so I can kind of keep all the boys in check. One of my favourite things when I'm in the gym is actually watching the lads spar. I like the aggression. <laughs> I've had a few spars with Nathan. Um, I would like to say he takes it easy on me, but he doesn't really, so... I can't really get a hit on him, if I'm honest. His hands move too fast. <laughs> Final run for training camp for the fight. Just make sure I'm like prepared and like cutting a bit of weight and that. Make sure I'm in shape. He's totally, totally up for it. And because he really, really, really wants to do it, he's actually put the effort in. I mean, a few years ago, I had absolutely no hopes for him. He had no motivation. He didn't know what he wanted to do. He didn't know what he wanted to be. And then since discovering the gym, his whole perception of persona has changed. Yeah, maybe he will be able to go on and forge a life for himself when I'm not here. Because that was always my biggest worry when I was gone. Who would look after him? My mum fought me with everything. She helped me watch my diet during this training camp. She made sure I, I'm making weight and stuff like that. So she's one of the main support pillars of me fighting. For him to actually lose 12 kilos, exasperated me, if I'm perfectly honest. It's jaw-dropping. It just shows how much he wants it. And uh, that really, really, really does make me proud and happy. And everything I do is because I need to prove myself to myself. I need to be able to show that I can do stuff myself and be able to be like, yeah, I did it, so good on me for doing it. Right, we're in town, let's go. Right, Jacob, get on the scales. 77.9. Yep. Beautiful. Ooh, ooh, we ain't done! Easy win! Yeah. I just part of my opinion is done because I like food too much, so the weigh-in's over, I can finally go and eat. Just keep nice and tight, pop a few shots. First minute will be like a bar brawl. Yeah. That's when I want you to stay nice and compact. Don't get hit with anything stupid because there'll be arms. Because then you've got 50-50 chance of getting knocked out. Willing torture, that's what I'd say it is. I'm, I'm putting myself through torture just to go and get punched in the face. It's stupid part about fighting. I feel like I have a good chance of knocking him out as well, though. Yeah, I don't see why not. I know I'm prepared. I'm just... Uh, I feel like I've done all I can. I mean, I hope I've done all I can. Knockout all day long. The day of the fight, you're nervous. You really can't eat anything. You're really scared. They don't care if anyone says they don't get scared because they're lying. <laughs> Walking to the ring, that's probably the scariest point. It's nerve-wracking, you know. You, you can hear your heart beating. It's sinking in, it's real, it's ready, it's happening. But then as soon as you get in that ring, you touch up and you fling the first punch, it all goes out the window. And then I'm totally fighting off instinct. 
we're going at it. And he's catching me with stuff, I'm loving it. He, I'm catching him with stuff, we're just nodding at each other, even though we're halfway through a war. Getting your hand raised, it's an amazing feeling. They're all ready, they all look confident, which is a big thing. When I'm in there and I'm rapping and I get nervous for them, but I'm excited now. I thought I'd be more nervous, but in my mind, the way I've been like saying to myself is it's just a fight, so now, now can really go wrong, now can really happen. I'm feeling a little bit nervous now, which is just normal. But yeah, I'm ready to go. I've done everything I need to do, it's time to have fun. exciting fight so I'm happy about that you know what you can't knock him at all I am absolutely stoked I'm over the moon I'm a little bit shocked that he said he wants to do it again which means I have to do it all again but I love him and he's brilliant Future's looking bright, mate. Like, there's so much I can improve on in my training and my lifestyle still. It's looking very good. I'm work in progress to where I need to be. Nothing's going to stop this. Yeah, I'd probably say I'm more enthusiastic about it because I've lost. I don't like losing, so I want to come back stronger and win and keep on winning. See, this gym, it brings good vibes. It's going in the right direction. That's all I can say. I've got direction, which I've never had. I know where I'm going with this. 